Okay, we're live. Okay, welcome everyone to our briefing for the 29th of April. And uh, one of Toledo region's biggest strengths is the arts and culture opportunities here. Whether talking about our world-class museum, award-winning library or zoo, our talented musicians and artists, metro parks or imagination station, universities, Toledo has a lot to offer in the way of family entertainment. And during this COVID-19 epidemic, our arts and culture community has found innovative ways to stay connected and involved in very meaningful ways. They formed a group called Toledo Area Cultural Leaders, or TACL, some time ago to support each other and share ideas. And joining us to talk more about this um, at the, today during this news conference will be Mark Folk, who is the Executive Director of the Toledo Arts Commission, Lori Hauser, the Executive Director of Imagination Station, and John Eichest, the uh, editor at Toledo.com. And we're gonna begin with Mark Folk from the Arts Commission now to just kind of describe to us, and we'll ask everyone else to turn their cameras off. Um, describe to us, Mark, what Tackle is exactly and who is part of that? What's the mission of this group? Tackle is a somewhat informal alliance of 23 arts and culture organizations throughout Northwest Ohio. And I believe a list of those organizations will be popping up for you to view. Um, we represent arts, culture, and recreation uh, and the humanities throughout the region. And frankly, we, we started organizing a little over 10 years ago uh, when the sector was fragmented to come together to improve coordination, advocacy, and our ability to collaborate because we understood that we all have a fundamental uh, mission to better serve the public and improve quality of life. And it's moments like a pandemic where that type of organization really pays off um, in organizing activities for families and artists and uh, others um, to uh, stay active at this time. You know, we're, we're experts in bringing people together. We bring millions of people together every year. And as we're forced to be separate right now, where um, the folks that have the responsibility to focus on new and in innovative ways to bring people together as we move from this current uh, shelter in place strategy onto the next strategy, maybe the summer when we can begin to organize in small groups and come back together and then move back into some form of, of normal and or adaptive uh, future. Um, it's the arts, not only are we here to serve our community, but we're also a really big part of the economy in the nation, the state, and in Northwest Ohio. I was on a call with Marianne Carter, the chairwoman of the National Endowment for the Arts, and they estimated in the shutdown, uh, just in the arts and culture sector alone, that the economy's losing $100 million every hour that, during the shutdown. So we're a big... Um, uh, impact, economic impact. The arts and culture sector generates about 38, or I'm sorry, $3.8 billion in Northwest Ohio alone. And if we zoom back down to the city of Toledo, um, there are 375 arts related businesses employing just shy of 3,000 people, which is more than the North Toledo Assembly plant and the Libby Glass Factory combined, just to put that in perspective. Um, so we're organized he and here, and uh, you're going to hear about some of the great things that the Tackle members uh, have been putting together for the community. And then a little bit later, I'll share uh, why it's important to follow other organizations in the community, maybe smaller organizations or individual artists, and find out what's going on. There are so many people that are um, reaching out to connect and use arts and culture to provide a sense of relief and um, uplifting spirit in this challenging time. And we're just honored to have a chance to talk a little bit about what's happening in Northwest Ohio with you all today. Well, I will um, second what you just said there, Mark. It's been really uh, uplifting every day to get my little art museum moment or to see what's happening at the zoo or uh, with Imagination Station, uh, with our symphony. All of those things have really um, helped us to stay connected and brought a bright spot to a lot of folks in our community. Let's bring Lori Hauser from Imagination Station into the conversation now. And Mark, will check back with you in a moment. 
if you'll turn your camera off. And Lori, just talk about some of those ways because it seems like um, the arts and culture community really has reached out in a big, big way during this epidemic. You know, this um, change in our world has been hard to take for everyone. And you might think that a lot of our facilities are closed where folks can't come in or go to a show or performance, but all of our cultural groups have really rallied. And there is a huge amount of experiences and programming and resources for everyone that can be positive and a warm feeling, but also um, educational for families that are at home um, with their children. And I think it's everything from story times to um, you'll find, uh, we do coding um, live on Facebook for Imagination Station, um, symphonies doing performances. Um, all of us have rallied that you will see out there and even doing some joint events like uh, celebrating the virtual opening for the Mud Hens. Yeah, it's been really um, exciting and, like I said, uplifting to a lot of folks, you know, when you're sitting at home, especially a uh, lot of interest in what you guys have been doing. But it hasn't just been your own organizations or these um, types of educational things that you've been doing. Your members and your employees have been reaching out in very big philanthropic ways in our community to help during this time as well. You know, it, it takes a village and I think it's really important and everyone has responded. I mean, everybody from, um, you know, Lourdes is offering up space to actually have homes for first responders and medical personnel who might be social distancing from their families. Um, you have people like the zoo donating food for first responders. Um, Science Center is doing um, activities daily for the daycares for first responders that the Y is hosting. Um, many of us are making 3D printed uh, masks at home. The library is a drop off. Um, I think you're seeing all of us then doing simple things as donating uh, PPE or cleaning equipment um, or materials, anything we can do to make us help us get through this together. Yeah, just amazing ways for them to be reaching out in the community, um, as well as continuing the mission of Imagination Station and all of the other wonderful organizations that we're talking about here today. Lori, thank you so much. Yeah, I'm well, going to bring Mark back in for just a moment um, because, Mark, you know, one of the things that we're seeing also at this time is it's hard to plan. <laughs> it's really hard to plan. You know, these events that you all put together um, when you're talking about something like momentum, for instance, are things that you spend a whole year planning for. And right now, we're not even really sure what is going to be happening this summer. You know, are our concert tickets going to be good? Should we be buying new ones? What is your advice and how are you and others planning for those big events that we look forward to? You know, Chris, as I had mentioned, uh, we're, we're thinking about this in phases, short term through June, where we know we're going to be uh, sheltering in place. And you'll hear a little bit later about where to access a list of all the activities that our organizations are designing for people during this time um, to locate those. But we're looking at midterm when we can. Can we? What's safe? When can we go back out? Um, and then the fall with things like momentum, uh, where you know the traditional benchmark has been to bring 25, 30,000 people. And now we have to focus on what that looks like in this day and age and how can we do things that are safe and separate, but still together and that connect us. So I think there's a lot of planning around scenarios. If I could speak specifically about your ticket issues, if, if it's a ticket for a, a local arts organization or event, I would go ahead and buy it at this time. And if you get to a point where you can't go, consider making that a donation to the organization. You know, we're all going through a pinch here. We're hearing that 95% of artists across the country are experiencing a loss of income. And we can say with 100% certainty when this is all over, we want all of this activity to still be available for us to use and enjoy and to bring us together. So whether it's buying tickets, I would go ahead and plan for your future and, and but understand that, you know, it's an adaptive future that, that things may change and that you may not be able to go to that concert, but you should um, step up and still support that organization if you're in a position to do so. With us, with Momentum for the Fall, for example, we're looking at um, stretching our programming out right now along the waterfront. And we're looking at 
things like timed entries and different types of activities that can be enjoyed in person, but also maybe live streamed into your homes. And I think that's, um, you know, uh, you're going to see a, a tremendous amount of innovation out of your creative community, out of your arts organization, your cultural organizations at this time, you know, and even with artists, they're, they're the, they're all rooted in uh, going into creativity without knowing what it will form, but with a sense of parameters around it. And we have new parameters right now through the pandemic, but, you know, every one of uh, the staff members or leaders or volunteers at cultural organizations in Northwest Ohio that I've talked to are just ferociously thinking about how they can adapt what they're doing because they understand the importance of, you know, arts and culture right now. I think um, I saw when, you know, uh, it was a meme that while everything is being shut down, when we were initially going through these uh, dark times, everyone was turning to Netflix. And that's just such a great example of uh, filmmakers and screenwriters and artists and actors um, bringing the arts alive in a moment um, when people were restricted. Um, that spirit is alive in Toledo and we're all working hard to make sure um, that we keep ourselves available to the community and keep our community connected. In some ways, the group of folks that you work with are out of the box thinkers to begin with, right? I mean, you work with these creative people, the innovators. Um, and so in, in a lot of ways, they are best suited maybe to think outside the box at a time like this. That's right, that's right, yeah. All right, so where can you find what's going on in Toledo and what all these amazing uh, people and organizations are doing right now? For that, we are going to bring John Eikest into the uh, conversation now. He is the editor at Toledo.com. John, um, you know, as an organization that really, um, you know, just gives us all a view of everything that's going on in Toledo every single week. Um, this had to be uh, very um, kind of disconcerting for you when all of a sudden all the events were stopping. That's right. Uh, and we appreciate being, uh, you know, included in on this conversation because it is a very challenging time and something that, you know, our daily task of really we think of ourselves in the arts and culture lane um, and focusing on the positive people, places, and things that are kind of um, that form what our community is. And so when that comes to a halt and is drastically altered, one of the things that we had to do was, first of all, reach out to all those organizations that essentially make Toledo.com. Um, we're just a vehicle for communication, you know, and think of ourselves as a, certainly we're a media source, but we're at, at this point, we're even more so think of ourselves as a neighbor and a community member that is trying to amplify whatever message that might be coming from an arts and cultural organization. And so for us, um, you know, Tackle has been a strong um, or a group of those organizations that we would ultimately, you know, kind of typically look to for events and things to highlight on the actual site. And so about a month ago, we reached out and said, hey, you know, what can we do um, on behalf of your organization? So it could be anything from, you know, we've talked a little bit about live stream and I'll get to something that we mobilized pretty quickly here on our end, but just press releases or what are the, um, what's the communication around canceling an event? We're starting to actually see events being rescheduled. For example, the Crosby Festival of the Arts just this week announced that they're moving to an October date and, you know, fingers crossed that that actually happens. So for us, um, the event calendar is what m many of our users and readers come to us for. They want to plan their week or their weekend and, you know, or the summer. And so, um, you know, it's important for us to kind of still keep an eye on all that. And um, so I think what you're seeing on the screen now is something that Tackle has been, you know, individual organizations definitely reaching out to us, sending us press releases, sending us updates. Um, and so we've tried to take, you know, 
what that has what that has looked like and shared that on the site, both on the event calendar, but I think the the thing that where we mobilized the, the quickest, we recognized quickly that um, live stream events were going to be a really big part of how people um, cope and and deal with this, especially in the arts. So we have a section on our site that's called the gig guide and the gig guide traditionally has been live music that we have focused on and we just keep track of days and um, venues and bands. And then, um, so we just added a new category that was a live stream category and we actually filtered that out and actually, actually feature that up on a special page on the site. So if you were to go to Toledo.com, you would see a couple of uh, immediate um, kind of banner spaces that would direct you to live stream Toledo, which is just, it's really uh, rather than the event calendar, which is in a state of flux right now and just paused, um, the live stream calendar is very much active. The, it, the, the page that we have for it even has a, a form where if someone's a band or an organization, um, we've started to see live stream town halls, we've seen um, business meetings, COVID resource conferences, um, Imagination Station is doing coding. So family activities, uh, some things have popped up from like places like the Metro Parks. And so for us, those, you know, to keep track of all that live stream information is important. We have links on there. But um, I would encourage anybody who does have a live stream to reach out to us so we can add that to uh, essentially our calendar. The other thing I would say too, just related to music live stream, essentially, um, you know, these musicians and these bands often will have their PayPal link or their Venmo link or their Cash App link. And, and while it's fun to just sit in the comfort of your own home and take this all in, oftentimes these are, you know, either individual fundraisers or we've seen fundraisers where bands, several bands have played kind of living room concerts uh, for the for a venue. So a lot of grassroots, uh, you know, efforts are, are happening and it's really, it's been inspiring to see Toledo become so, you know, um, philanthropic and supportive of each other. Yeah, it has been. And what a great way to be able to kind of consolidate everything to the uh, in, in one place so that we know where to go to find out what is happening, John. So thank you and Toledo.com for compiling all of that. It's really um, a great one-stop shop yeah, thank for people you. to see what events are going on. We do have a question. Just said that um, an event has been canceled and moved to, can you repeat that? I'm sorry, we just that, froze that, you, John. Was that a Hold question a for me? At, at, um, could you repeat that? Yes. You you mentioned you mentioned a few moments ago that there was a you just got word that a uh, an event had been postponed from July or June to October. That's right. And so, for example, I mean, we're spending time like a lot of it, like a lot of um, people in the community. Social media has um, kind of heightened its importance. It's one of the ways that people are getting information. And so where I would typically be, and along with the staff, trying to figure out what events are happening, now we're looking for announcements. So something that Toledo Bros um, just announced on Facebook, I wanna say maybe two days ago, um, was the fact that they um, moved the Crosby Festival uh, date and even the location. And so we're trying to take that in, um, you know, in real time and to flip that back out to the public. So we have, uh, for example, of um, thousands of Facebook followers. So one of the ways that we can help organizations that, that we feel we can um, be, again, that good neighbor is to just share that information. So I'm often just taking something that the Metro Parks or Toledo Bros or the Department of Health or Imagination Station or the Arts Commission. I'm just sharing that back out just um, because it's what we do. It's what we typically do every day. So um, it's, it's just, uh, again, communicating it and amplifying it and trying to spread the word. 
Yeah, and we are a community that loves events, right? We love to go and we look forward to these annual events like the Crosby Festival um, and other things in our community. We are good about buying tickets to events and shows and supporting our arts um, community. So it's a great way for us to be able to continue to do that and keep up with maybe um, when you're used to going someplace in June to put it on your calendar for later in the year uh, as things uh, hopefully come back into more normal. Mark, I wanted to bring you in one more time to talk about, um, this is a difficult time for a lot of artists. You know, uh, John just kind of hit on people who are doing gigs and you can, you know, tip them uh, through PayPal and stuff if you're enjoying their music while you're listening at home. Um, are there resources out there for artists uh, in our community? There are. Um, if artists go to the artscommission.org, we've compiled an active and ongoing list of uh, local and national funding opportunities. We were able to pull some funds together in short order to offer emergency grants for artists. Um, and we were able to help support uh, 37 artists who lost roughly about $2,500 a month in livelihood through the collapse of the gig economy, um, which many of these folks kind of cobble together all these independent opportunities um, uh, to uh, provide their employment. Um, artists, what's unique about this moment in this Recovery Act is that artists are being qualified as uh, independent contractors. And there's pre-registration open now for unemployment for artists, musicians, and other art workers um, that have been functioning in that gig economy. I would um, also echo um, John's comments about supporting artists and even supporting many of our smaller organizations or um, uh, cultural providers in the community. I know there's some great things happening. Children's Theater Workshop is offering online performances. The Sophia Quintero Arts and Cultural Center is doing online cooking classes. Those are ways you can go and participate and perhaps make a donation. Um, with our artist population, you know, 95% of them are experiencing some loss of income. Um, I would encourage everyone to, you know, this is a time where you have time to go and explore. Look up artists uh, in our community on social media, on Instagram, on Facebook, begin to follow them. Um, if you've been trapped in your house for seven weeks like I am, you will, uh, I already appreciate the value of artwork. New artwork is often in my mind as well. And if you have the means, buy a work of art. As John had said, make a donation uh, for a performance. There are lots of different opportunities out there if you start to explore. Uh, for example, there's a website called Bandcamp where many of our local artists, bandcamp.com, uh, have their music for sale. This Friday, 100% of purchases will go directly um, to the pockets of these musicians and artists without any fees being taken out. Um, so stay connected with the Arts Commission, um, stay connected with the Ohio Arts Council, sign up for different organizations that are within this field. They're actively trying to get information out. Uh, I am on calls weekly with uh, leaders from throughout the country, leaders from throughout the region and the state, all working hard to try to figure out what we can do to help artists in this time. All right, thank you so much, Mark. And uh, Lori, we'll bring you in one last time too because you have uh, quite a construction project going on at Imagination Station. Are you still building your theater and planning to open on time? Yeah, um, so we had a pause with some of the uh, things that have taken place with some of the construction, but everything is starting back uh, first of next week. Um, and so definitely should be completed this summer. So we are very excited to have that um, unveiled for the community and a new attraction to take advantage of. One thing that I would also echo is um, when you were talking about like supporting um, organizations, even with ticket sales or um, supporting artists, Many of our organizations have memberships or season tickets, and I think a lot of us are trying to extend benefits for that. So it's a way to also support and then also have access to things um, from a performance schedule to um, an experience inside of a building or something. So I think that's another way that you can still get involved. 
Yeah, we want to make sure that all of our organizations are staying uh, healthy during this time so that they are there for us when we get back into the public in a big way. Lori, thank you. Yeah. We are able to take some questions um, for any of our three guests. So if anybody from our panel of media has questions that they would like to ask, you can raise your hand um, and we will call on you. You can ask your own question or if you have a question you'd like to put into the chat section, you can do that. If you don't have um, access to a microphone um, on your laptop or tablet that you're using, I don't see any questions. You guys have done a great job answering everything for everybody. Hey, Chris, this is John. Um, do you yeah, mind if I, pop I just back have, in. <laughs> well, sorry to interrupt. I wanted to um, make one more point. You know, when we're talking about these artists um, and these um, creatives, it occurs to me that these are all people who are going through exactly what we're all experiencing. And so I've talked to friends who are artists or creatives who are really going through a tough time and they're actually kind of at a um, at a loss to create and then I've talked to some who are creating more than ever before they're very inspired or they're very engaged and so I just I, th I thought it was worth mentioning that you know as we are all in this together and we've heard that so many times um, we're leaning hard on the people who are these creatives um, and in the arts to help us cope and they are trying to do the same thing themselves and so i would just encourage everybody to be thoughtful and um you know empathetic uh to the to the people who rely we rely on so heavily with, with or without a pandemic and so um i just thought it was worth mentioning yeah, there are lots of ways and ideas that you all have given us to be able to be supportive. Um, Mark and Laurie, if you could turn your cameras back on for just a moment. We just want to thank all of you for um, being here with us today and talking about this, letting us know what's going on behind the scenes at all of our arts and culture organizations. Um, we miss you as much as you miss us. I know that that is, that is true and can't wait until we can all be together again and patronizing the wonderful organizations in our community. So I'm not seeing any questions from our panel, so I will just uh, say thank you again. Thank you to our interpreters, Anita and Desiree, for being here with us today as well. And um, we appreciate you. We'll be here for you when this is all over. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.